Yo, what's good, y'all? Kanji Bonham here. Been a while since I did an actual commentary mainline video, but when the NBA season starts going into motion, you will hear a lot more of my voice, especially that second edition of that Bulls Rant series, so just stay in tune for that. So, let me give y'all the preface before going in, just for context sake. So, a few days ago, Mark J. Spears reported that allegedly there's a mystery Eastern Conference team entering the conversation for the Dame Sweepskate. Many speculated that it'd probably be a team like the Knicks or the Raptors that would be the so-called mystery team. But to everyone's surprise, including me, just two days ago, it was insinuated that it was the Bulls who had been that mystery team, leading to many conversations about the Bulls, what the Bulls were planning. Now at first I was really excited, like holy shit, we may potentially land Dane, but once that initial excitement was over, I was really wondering like, what would that trade package actually look like? As per usual, the media just loves putting Levine in unrealistic trade scenarios. They treat him like a star when the trade scenarios come in, but during the season, they act like he's a scrub. You know, typical media. But besides that, of course, the trade would probably have to do something between Levine or DeRozan in some sense. And as I look deeper into it, I realize that DeRozan actually makes a lot of sense to join the Trailblazers as opposed to Levine. So today, I'll be going over my reasons as to why DeMar would make a perfect candidate to be in a trade for Dane. So let's get into it. When looking at the Portland Trailblazers roster, it is apparent that the team's most prominent players, including Scoot and Simons, are guard-type players. So including Levine, who has mostly played shooting guard in his entire career, wouldn't make much sense getting paired up with Scoot and Simons and those other guard-type players. However, DeMar, though also playing at the guard position for the majority of his career, has, in his latter parts of his career, transitioned his overall game to be more in line with the forward position, specifically small forward. And the small forward position on the Blazers is a key area where the Blazers kind of lose depth unless you put Jeremy Grant at the 3. So with the Mars inclusion, you create a sort of starting 5 with Stu and Simons at the 1 and 2, the Mars at the 3, Jeremy Grant at the 4, and Merchant playing the 5. Now defensive perimeter wise, while Scoot is a solid defender from what I've seen, Simons and DeMar are not the greatest defenders to put lightly. But with players like Matisse and Sharp coming in and out of rotations, they should be okay on that end. While offensively, that lineup looks pretty stacked. It could potentially be one of the more above average offensive lineups if the cards line up right. Now let's get on to my second reason. The second reason why I believe DeMar is a great fit for the Blazers is because over the past couple of seasons, DeMar has garnered a reputation for being a great mentor to his younger teammates. We've seen how the younger guys on the team, whether it be on the Bulls or the Spurs, always look up to DeMar in high praise. And to be honest, it's not surprising why. What NBA star is out here setting up a private session at 5 a.m. in the morning specifically to force his teammates younger than 25 to train and bulk up for the season? DeMar has always brought great culture to whatever team he comes across with, and for the Blazers, to have a guy like that mature enough to guide their two most talented guys in school and Simons to their utmost potential would be too good of an offer to not at least put in consideration. Now my third reason is going to sound like a downer, but hear me out. DeMar is not a championship caliber player. Like, I love DeMar. He's one of my favorite players of all time. I believe him to be one of the more talented players in the league. More talented than some of the players I consider championship caliber. But if I were a part of an organization that had serious championship aspirations, I'm not looking at DeMar as even a third star to be alongside my team. I believe that's how most front offices in those positions view with DeMar as. His play style is too rambunction and unorthodox to really create a functional setup for him or his team to succeed in any playoff run. So the dark reality for DeRozan is that even though he's a great player who I believe is worthy of winning the ring, he's unfortunately not a real main target for teams in position to get, take a gamble on him. So with DeMar expiring contract and his lack of appeal in the market, so 
low, obviously being one of the more talented players in the league, it would be a low risk, high reward transaction to, for the Blazers to take on. The Blazers, the Blazers objective as of right now is probably to make the play in, build off their younger players and refresh the poor losing culture that has been a stigma for the past couple of seasons. With adding DeMar to that situation, it makes sure not only the players are motivated and know what it takes to become a great player, but also creates a new breath of fresh air and culture, which, which the Blazers extremely need. Now with that being said, do I actually believe the trade will go through? Honestly, not really. I feel like this is one of those rumors that has a lot of promise at first. It gets people like me talking about the potential possibilities and outcomes of a hypothetical trade rumor, but eventually leads to nowhere which would eventually become one of those remember when memories we talk about in conversations. But if this trade were to actually be brought into fruition, I believe both sides would win instead of the media most likely portrayal of the trade being lopsided. Dame wants to win and advance in his career. I believe the Bulls have the star power and depth to provide that, which sounds crazy, but when you really look at the Bulls on paper, we have the talent, it's just the pieces don't work together. If we can acquire Dame, most of our spacing and playmaking issues will be solved, and some add some defensive big men, again, call me crazy, but we could legit contend if the right moves are set in motion. On the other side, the Blazers probably got some picks to build up in the draft and you get a great quality leader who will set a great good culture among the franchise and already fits in well with the starting lineup. Now I already see the rebuttal in the comment section talking about how DeMar would take shots from Simons and Scoot which would hinder the game and to a degree I do agree but having a general role model on the team who is disciplined and mostly respected star in the league would be boundaries more of a help and advantage compared to the hindrance for those guys. This offseason, we have seen teams like the Hornets and the Rockets who have great young talented guys, but under poor leadership and lack of integrity, those teams have been getting hit with so much off-court drama, inefficient play, and just no stable culture. With DeMar, you can prevent a situation like that, because I know damn well DeMar Compton as ain't gonna let no profanity like that happen on his team. So to me, in my opinion, advan the advantages outweigh the many disadvantages that come with having DeRozan. Plus, DeRozan is on an expiring contract, so if it's really a problem, they could just get rid of him in one to two seasons. But yeah, that's just my thoughts. What do you think about the rumor? Would it be a good idea, or am I just an overly optimistic delusional Bulls fan who love for anything to get going in my organization? Let me know, and I'm out. Peace.